Disney Channel outfits in the 2010s were like onions. There were a lot of layers. Some might say too many. If you watched Disney during this time and paused the TV at any given moment, you could expect the character you were watching to be draped in anywhere between five and 500 pieces of clothing and accessories. If it was Wizards of Waverly Place, Alex Russo donned some combination of tank top, even longer tank top, vest, statement necklace, long beaded necklace, even longer beaded necklace, skirt, tights, knee-high socks, and slouchy boots. If it was Shake It Up, Rocky would sport a t-shirt, cardigan, jean jacket, colorful leggings, skirt, non-functional belt, and knee-high converse because that was a thing. If you had the pleasure of viewing Ashley Tisdale on a red carpet, she'd wear some combination of huge belt, sparkly skirt, jeans, and the occasional sleeping mask. In retrospect, the way Disney Channel stars dressed was at best camp and at worst in the dark. No fabric, pattern, or color was off limits. Maximalism was the order of the day. No look was complete without a skinny scarf, really wide belt, or ill-advised fedora. While many of these outfits have been written off in recent years, there's some that have transcended the realm of ridiculous and sit definitively on the island of idiosyncratic but iconic. Think Raven Baxter's fur trimmed coats, Harper's dress made of markers, or any look that involved London Tifton in a beret. If I had to use one word to describe the essence of a Disney Channel outfit, it would be spunky. The protagonists in these shows always had a special something that made them different from everyone else. Miley Stewart was secretly a pop star, Raven Baxter could see the future, Alex Russo was a talented wizard, and Sunny Monroe a rising sketch star. It made sense that the outfits were a bit wacky because so were the characters and the universes they existed in. These shows also had to compete with cartoons for the attention of our young minds, and they did that by being as colorful as possible. While the outfits we saw on Disney stars were not representative of how the average teen dressed, the one thing that felt rooted in reality, albeit at times over the top, was the layering. This was the era of long sleeves under t-shirts, tank tops over long sleeves, tunics over leggings, and camis under henleys. There were clothes that just came sewn together to create the illusion of layering. While layering was a trend in the 2000s, it was also practical. Some of us had strict parents' dress codes or just didn't feel comfortable showing the skin of our shoulders. Layering was used to dress trendy but modestly, hence the whole jeans under dresses moment. When it comes to fashion trends, what goes around comes back around. In the past few years, there has been a noticeable Y2K renaissance, and the dresses over jeans combination has made a tepid return amongst the bravest of fashion girlies. While many celebrities in the early 2000s sported dresses over jeans, there's a distinct Disney-branded youthfulness that I associate with this styling choice. In a 2022 interview with Vogue, a former Disney Channel costume designer, Katherine Wagner, referenced this image of Miley Cyrus wearing a dress with jeans and said, I did that. I remember that very well. The funny thing is, it was originally an even longer dress, but we shortened it. Those girls would wear jeans for modesty because they were always jumping around and running around. When I think of the word modesty, it has a religious ring to it. As a child who grew up in church, it was a no-brainer. Spaghetti straps were inevitably accompanied with t-shirts underneath. Leggings were not pants, but something you wore under skirts or with a really long cardigan if you were lucky. Layering was a tool to create interesting yet modest outfits, and Disney Channel styling heavily relied on it. I don't think it's a coincidence that at this time in the mid-2000s, purity culture became mainstream. The concept of modesty is central to purity culture, dictating appropriate clothing and behavior to avoid arousing sexual desires in oneself or others. Modesty is often linked to the idea that revealing clothing or behaviors can lead to impure thoughts or actions. TikTok creator Nicole Urban made a great video linking purity culture's impact on Disney Star's outfits, and I really want to unpack that today because I think it's such an interesting topic with, no pun intended, a lot of layers. Before we get into that, I want to give you a quick styling tip. The key to a perfectly layered outfit starts with your underwear, which is why I want to thank Parade for sponsoring this portion of the video. Parade is your go-to for comfortable and cute undergarments. They are made with inclusivity in mind. They go up to size 5XL and have an amazing range of colors, materials, and styles. 
These are a few of my favorites. First, the high rise silky mesh boy shorts are truly my ideal underwear. The mesh makes them so breathable. The nose is not the only part of our body that needs to breathe. Also because they are boy shorts, there's no wedgie involved, but they still give that seamless look. I can't say enough good things about these. I also got the cloud scoop bralette, which is so comfortable and soft. It's in this really quaint vintage pattern, but with modern day support. Also a bonus is that it matches really well with this pajama set that I also got from Parade. Unfortunately, the rumors are true. Wearing matching pajamas actually makes you feel really good about yourself. If your life is in shambles, but you're wearing matching pajamas, is your life really in shambles? Think about it. If any of these products interest you, head to the link in my description to check out Parade and use my code AM40 for 40% off your next purchase. Okay. Back to the video. While Disney has remained secular, it's known for its family-friendly values, and family-friendly values have been widely used as a dog whistle for Christian values. Disney has gotten increasingly progressive over the years, which has alienated a small set of staunch evangelical Christians, but generally speaking, Disney's commitment to appealing to basically everyone is unwavering. And one way to appeal to everyone, especially everyone's kids, is to steer clear of anything remotely controversial or heavy and lean into innocence and fun by way of singing and dancing. In the late 1980s and early 1990s, Disney's the all-new Mickey Mouse Clubhouse provided a launching pad for several young talents who would go on to become household names in the entertainment industry. Among these rising stars were Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, and Justin Timberlake. While their early careers were shaped within the confines of the wholesome Disney image, their post-Disney trajectories took a turn for the mature. In the case of a Disney Channel star, an inkling of sexuality is deemed scandalous, even after the mouse has stopped signing your paychecks. Britney Spears sparked controversy after the release of her Baby One More Time music video, which famously features her in a sexy schoolgirl outfit. What made this Lolita illusion even more provocative was the fact that Spears was a Mouseketeer just five years before. Shortly after that, in 2002, Christina Aguilera followed suit and shed her sanitized image with the release of her fourth studio album, Stripped. The lead single, Dirty, marked a significant departure from her previous pop princess image and showcased an edgier side. The music video was particularly notable for its provocative and risque imagery, featuring Aguilera in revealing outfits and engaging in more explicit choreography. This marked a deliberate departure from her earlier, more innocent image cultivated during her Disney days as she embraced a more liberated and sexually empowered persona. That same year, Justin Timberlake left NSYNC and released his debut solo album, Justified. He embraced a more mature sound and underwent a transformation in his image. Shedding the clean-cut boy-next-door persona, he adopted a more sophisticated and mature style. His fashion choices and overall presentation evolved to reflect a grown-up and confident artist, distancing himself from the teeny bopper image associated with his Disney past. By the mid-2000s, Disney Channel was ready to usher in a new generation of role model ready pop stars and this time around they came with purity rings. Silver bands that publicly signify a commitment to abstain from sex before marriage. Even before his Disney days, Joe Jonas first wore a purity ring as early as 10 years old. Growing up as the sons of a Pentecostal pastor, before the Jonas Brothers were expected to be positive role models for their fans, they were expected to lead as examples in their church, hence the purity rings. Before looking into it for this video, I assumed that purity rings had been around for as long as the concept of virginity, which is to say basically forever, but to my surprise, they only became a thing in the 90s. The True Love Waits campaign launched in the early 1990s by the Southern Baptist Convention in the United States played a significant role in popularizing the use of purity rings. The campaign encouraged young people to make a commitment to sexual abstinence until marriage and use rings as a tangible symbol of that commitment. The broader purity culture movement, which gained prominence in conservative Christian circles in the 1990s and 2000s, contributed to the mainstream popularity of purity rings. The movement aimed to promote traditional values, emphasizing the importance of sexual purity and modesty and adherence to biblical principles in relationships. 
Purity rings became a cultural phenomenon through the high-profile Disney Channel stars that wore them, like the Jonas Brothers, Miley Cyrus, Selena Gomez, and Demi Lovato. For the Jonas Brothers particularly, this public acknowledgement became a defining aspect of their identity. A year before the famously messy 2009 MTV Video Music Awards, the Jonas Brothers were the cause celebra of 2008's ceremony. British comedian Russell Brand hosted the VMAs that year, and during his opening monologue, he continuously mocked the Jonas Brothers for wearing purity rings. He called them ungrateful for not having sex with any woman they want, which is objectively strange and invasive in any scenario, but because the brothers were 15, 19, and 20 at the time, it was especially weird. While the Jonas Brothers were ashamed for wearing purity rings, it was viewed as much more acceptable for female celebrities like Miley Cyrus and Selena Gomez to show off their purity ring status. They were put on a pedestal for preserving their innocence. Disney never forced its stars to wear purity rings, but this squeaky clean symbol undoubtedly aligned with its goal of making the talent not just stars, but good role models. If the parents think Disney Channel teens are a good influence, it means more TV shows watched, more merchandise sold, and ultimately more money lining Disney's pockets. I think this translated to how Disney stars were dressed. Anything that could be remotely perceived as too short or inappropriate was layered. In retrospect, a lot of people are like, what the hell were they wearing? But as kids, most people didn't think much of the outfits the characters wore because they blended in with the colorful sets and general absurdity of the worlds. When the shows were airing, the costumes served their purpose. Something I do find really interesting is the difference in styling between Disney Channel outfits and Nickelodeon outfits, specifically the outfits on Victorious. Victorious is a good example to compare to the Disney shows because it was kind of created because Nick was like, oh shit, we need a pop star too since Disney Channel has a bunch of singers, so let's keep up, find a girl who can sing really well, and make her the side character. Victorious was a show that I really loved as a kid and I was old enough to distinctly remember watching it for the first time. I will say, when I watched Disney Channel, the way that the teens looked felt unrealistic to me because they all fit into the ideal yet unrealistic beauty standard. They were thin, had flawless skin, perfect hair and makeup, and that was also the case for the teens on Victorious. However, the teens on Victorious felt a lot older compared to their Disney counterparts, and I think this was mainly because of the styling. On Victorious, they would put the characters in shorter dresses and shorter shorts, but they wouldn't have neon leggings or jeans underneath. The tone of Victorious and Nick shows in general was much more edgy than Disney, and I think that was reflected in the outfits. Even though Tori was kind of supposed to be the goody two-shoes future pop star protagonist, looking at her outfits compared to Hannah Montana, they're really different. You would see Tori wearing a lot of dark lace and shorter going out type dresses. The colors of her clothes weren't as bright and garish. Also Kat, who was famously an immature and childish character, was dressed in some of the most mature clothing. She would wear sleeveless tops and short shorts and high heels. Like who was wearing that to high school? One particular episode where the maturity of the styling really stood out on Victorious was season one, episode eight, Survival of the Hottest. In this episode, there was a heat wave and the characters went to the beach, but they all got stuck in Beck's RV, so naturally things got sweaty. Most of the girls were wearing crop tops and bikinis, which is something that you never saw on Disney Channel. If it was up to Disney, belly buttons did not exist. Everyone wore a one piece. I remember watching this Victorious episode when I was 10, and it felt illegal, especially because I had a very modesty-focused upbringing, but I think a lot of people felt the same way. The episode then and now feels too suggestive for how old the characters and real life actors were. They were all between the ages of 15 and 17 years old. In retrospect, it's even creepier knowing that after everything has come out about the show's creator, Dan Schneider, when it came to picking costumes, Schneider signed off on all outfits and campaigned for the skimpier options. In general, the styling of Victorious seemed to age the characters up, while on the other hand, Disney shows like Hannah Montana 
use clothing to age the characters down. It is commendable that Disney chose to dress their talent in age-appropriate outfits that they felt comfortable in, but Disney still benefited from their young star's sexuality in a different way by capitalizing on their virginity. In a 2018 Jezebel article, Hazel Sillis writes, Disney's pursuit of artists who preach chastity grew more aggressive in the mid-2000s with signees like Allie and AJ, the Jonas Brothers, Miley Cyrus, Demi Lovato, and Selena Gomez. And the increase may also have been a reaction to the shadow Britney Spears cast on not just teen pop, but teen girl culture in general. Tabloid covers wondered if she had grown up too sexy, too fast. News outlets contended with the fact that preteens were wearing crop tops and mini skirts. Silas continues, there was also a growing awareness of the fact that while their virginities may have been a central marketing point for these young stars, it also ended up sexualizing them further and Disney was essentially using that to make a profit. Whenever a star did do something relatively normal for a teenager, like take sexy photos, they were more intensely scrutinized. In the mid-2000s, when several major Disney stars wore purity rings, abstinence-only education was well-funded. In 2001, President George W. Bush provided federal funding for faith-based pro-abstinence programs. For example, the Virginity Pledge Program, Silver Ring Thing, didn't make most of its money from selling purity rings, but from grants it received like the over $1 million it got from Bush's community-based abstinence education program. I think that's why you saw Disney really overcorrecting for any perceived sexiness by dressing the talent in modest clothing with a lot of layers. Regardless of the government's funding for pro-purity culture organizations, of course Disney Channel is for kids and these characters wouldn't be wearing skimpy outfits anyway, but I do think the political climate heavily influenced Disney's investment in keeping their stars perceived as pure and innocent. By the mid-2010s, purity rings fell out of the cultural zeitgeist as the stars who once brandished them slowly took their bands off. This is also around the time that funding for pro-abstinence programs dramatically decreased. Barack Obama's 2010 budget eliminated federal funding for abstinence-only sex education only giving funding to programs that were actually proven to be effective. And in the final budget for his administration, he elected to eliminate abstinence-only program funding completely. The media's obsession with young stars' virginity and innocence seemed to slowly grind to a halt. The next generation of Disney stars didn't seem to be as preoccupied with being perceived as perfect and sexless as their predecessors, and I think that's a good thing. I think it's also really interesting to think about the kinds of clothes that Disney Channel teens were wearing because there's been this huge internet discourse of over the fact that tweens don't exist anymore. And even back then, what the kids were wearing on Disney Channel was totally not representative of what kids in real life were wearing. However, I do feel like there is probably a lack of like tween representation on TV, and I feel like a lot of us really got that from the shows on Disney Channel and Nickelodeon, and with the decline of cable TV, there aren't as many shows and whole platforms dedicated to kids between the ages of like 9 and 14. On the TV shows we watched though, there was definitely a mix of clothing from relatively adult stores and relatively kid-friendly stores. For example, like if you look at what Selena Gomez was wearing on Wizards of Waverly Place, a lot of that stuff was like free people. And I feel like most, you know, people in their teens weren't able to afford something like free people because it was pretty expensive. But also you had Jesse on TV and they would dress Sky Jackson in stuff that was like clearly from justice. But like so many people have said online, there is definitely a lack of tween media as well as like tween stores. There's no more Justice, there's no more Libby Lou, and now kids are like raiding the aisles of Sephora to get their makeup and skincare, which is weird. Honestly, I'm not really sure like what shows tweens are watching these days. Maybe The Summer I Turned Pretty, which is weird because honestly, I feel like a lot of people my age watch that. <laughs> While the outfits on Disney were kind of ugly, I think it's kind of nice that we at least had these like teen idols to look up to because it seems like that demographic of celebrity has 
slowly faded away because the line is kind of blurring with what's made for kids and what's made for young adults. I kind of think of someone like Olivia Rodrigo, for example, who was a Disney star and obviously is pretty young and was recently a teenager, but I feel like she still appeals to like a very big young adult fan base and it's not just teens. And I kind of feel like that era of tweens and teens like having their own thing <laughs> to look up to is over. Like I think about like Justin Bieber in like One Direction. I feel like a lot of things now are geared towards young adults and tweens just sort of happen to be under that demographic umbrella. We're going from children's place to like Zara. Where is the Delia's? I would love to hear your thoughts about Disney Channel outfits and I will see you in my next video. Bye.